right, welcome everybody to the um, Horizon FPGA meetup. This is uh, the the twentieth of September, twenty twenty four, and this is where we talk about what we've done over the past week, and what we have planned over the next week, um, and over the time period beyond that, of course. Uh, and if we need any resources, and if we have any roadblocks that are preventing us from doing um, what we're we're doing. Um, so let's go ahead and, and uh, lead off with with Ken. It looks like you're remote, so you have the floor to start us off. Yeah. Um, well, this week I started a new job, so did not have a whole lot of time on this uh, issue. But I did try and follow up the uh, right, tracing the uh, headless.c and the drivers, the uh, JSD driver that's throwing off this uh, supposed error. The uh, and by the way, the in the uh, analog devices uh, engineering zone uh, discussion, they said that it wasn't a problem, and I've seen a couple other threads where people had somewhat similar issues, and they kind of said that that's not not a like this, and it's it looks like it might be like a initialization startup issue. The there there's two. There's actually, well, there's three bits getting set in this error register. One of them's underflow. One of them's overflow. And the other one, it's tough to tell still. It doesn't seem to be used directly um, in the error reporting. It might be a reset flag that says the block's currently under reset. But I'm, I'm having trouble telling that definitively. But there's... Um, Which bits are set in your particular error code? Is it the... Is it the overflow and then this weird bit that you that we don't know what it does yet? There, yeah, it's a, one weird bit, which is bit position zero, and uh, underflow and overflow, which is bits five and six. So oh, so all the bits are set. All three of those are set. I, there may be other bits in there that don't get set, but those are the ones that are showing up in the error log. Um, yeah, so uh, it doesn't subsequently report that register although it it does return it says that all three of the jesd links which is the uh, receive transmit and the receive observe are are initialized okay they're calibrated uh, at the end of the report there there is a, a final um printout which is it just says buy um actually it doesn't seem to abort things it's just kind of a status report but it it, it is it's only supposed to throw out that buy printf uh when there is a, a air status, which I think is the air status that's being uh, report re like reported upstream, so it's all the same thing, I think. Okay, but that's why you were worried that it wasn't working because you got this BYE, this buy that looks like it terminated with an error code and and is not going to progress any further and not going to produce the the artifacts that you need. That was the impression you had, right? Yeah, it's weird. There. It, in the source, it's it's got like a go to, which is kind of weird for C. <laughs> it, it's yeah. it jumps to this routine, and just simply returns by, but it doesn't seem like it just quits out. It seems like that's just kind of a like the the last little s status. I maybe somebody else can help me trace because uh, I'm not familiar with. It. I don't know if there's some sort of macro or something because I, I I I can find where it's reporting these errors in the code now and um but actually digging deeper into what that register comprises in the RTL they haven't haven't done that yet so at this point I'm just looking at the uh, at the driver code that's querying the register I haven't looked at the guts of the register RTL itself but I'm just going to take for what what the what the source says the bit does is it's uh, underflow and overflow. And we do see, you know, there is this kind of repetitive cycling of, of a register upstream of that. So it, so it sort of seems like it's um, trying to come up and then maybe after a certain amount, it, it throws off this error. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, we might be able to add some delay into the initialization and have it check these things. And that they may actually just as a as a consequence, like if we can de delay this uh, status report a bit, it may just show that it's in initialized. So it may be kind of a a bit of a chicken and egg or 
freeze condition, it may not quite have enough time before it's settled out and we're starting to check things. So that, that might be some, and that, that would be like, I know where to add that in the code, in the source, that delay. Oh, good. Okay. Could, can you go ahead and try that and see what happens? Because that would, that would be very illuminative. Yeah. So other than that, just the, the fact that uh, the engineering zone guys seem to say it's not near, that that makes me think we we should probably just try and proceed and, and assuming that it's not, but I'll, I'll just keep kind of digging on the side here, but I'm, I'm going to try and just. Yeah, that's, that's reassuring in a way if they say that, oh yeah, it's no big deal, but like, I don't know, I take error messages seriously and so do you. So it's a little weird to, to be told to, to disregard a, what looks like an error message and, um, but okay, let's, let's take it at face value and see what we can do over the next week. And yeah, the fact that, that I'm pretty sure we did not see these errors right off the bat. I know. So I, I, there I, must I, be something I, like it's close. I, to a... I agree. I was there and I saw that we, we got through this and it did not happen. And so it's very concerning that we now see something different. So I, yeah, but it may be something that it's like there's a training sequence and you were just kind of on the edge of it uh, syncing up before you, you know, but we start querying things before they're quite synced up. So, okay. Yeah. Let's try, let's, let's, let's take your plan and run with it and, and, and then next week we'll know more. Does that sound fair? Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's uh that's actually good news. Although I, like I said, I'm, I'm always a little weirded out when people say, oh, don't worry about that error message. That's nothing <laughs> because it's like <laughs> it's giving you an error for a reason, I assume. So but it's uh, okay. But the uh, thank you for, for digging in and, and being persistent because uh, persistence and consistency is the only way we'll get this done. Okay. Anything else, Ken? No. Nope. All right. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate you uh, logging in on the road. That's uh, that's really nice. And uh, we'll go to Go to Paul. Uh, you have the floor. Okay. Well, I don't have much to report from this week. Um, remote lab is situation normal as far as I know. Um, I spent some time working with you, Michelle, on, uh, on pseudo random bit sequence testing and uh, uncovered an issue or two uh, with you on that. I'll let you take the lead on reporting that. I think that's about it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and I know that you you still want to integrate the the new hardware and and test things. Um, do you have any any updates on on that or any thoughts on when you'd like to to try that? Um, no, no new thoughts. I don't want to interrupt progress being made. So at some convenient time in the future. Okay. Well, thank you. It's appreciated. So yeah, there's uh, I can speak to the uh, progress on FPGA work for Opulent Voice. And what I'll do is I'll I'll lead off by summarizing um, Matthew's report. So, so he had a conflict, not able to, to join us today, uh, but he, he explains his status as follows. Um, so two major points with some sub points. The first major point is that a uh, working modem, this is the opulent voice, uh, minimum shift keying FPGA based modem, our implementation targets the Pluto SDR at first and then other uh, SDRs and other uh, hardware in the future. Um, but the, we've achieved a working internal loopback with the pseudo-random uh, bit sequence or binary sequence. So this is PRBS for short. So when you hear PRBS, it's the pseudo-random binary sequence. So we've achieved a working modem internal loopback with the internal PRBS. There are some issues. The Frequency two, we have two frequencies for minimum shift keying um, implementation. And the second frequency Costas loop accumulator gets stuck while the F1 or the first frequency accumulator is acting as expected. So that was that was fun. Uh, the F2 accumulator can be made to move. You can force it, but it doesn't update as expected. Regardless of this uh, Costas loop weirdness on the second frequency, error-free operation has been observed. So this is kind of a big deal. Uh, a loop back testing, this is inside the SDR. So what we're doing is um, generating a, a binary sequence. So it's pseudo-random. So it looks like 
data and that we're, we're, we're fake transmitting, fake receiving. So it doesn't go out to the radio, but it goes through all of the logic. So this is to test the parts of the, the system that, that generate uh, and, and receive our, uh, our, our transmission. Um, and this is the sort of the first step, right? So you, what you want to see is things working over the air, but uh, you know, you need to divide and conquer. And so anything that happens over the air with the radio parts, we're going to leave that off for now. And we're just doing a loop back. So loop back through the logic. And about a week ago, this looked like it was working. We're much more confident uh, now a week later saying that this is is working and that we're, we're figuring things out. Uh, there's a number of registers that need to be set. And things like the uh, Costas loop accumulator, uh, the gains on the low pass filter uh, for stability, those things need to be uh, optimized. And so we, after a week, uh, the situation is is much improved. Uh, we've made lots of progress there. And uh, we do see some timing things. Uh, for example, when you first start up the radio, you can't just start wiggling all the registers right off the bat. There are some some things that need to settle and some it looks like there's some some delays and some timing issues um, that we're gaining understanding of so this isn't really related to our logic but in um in the rest of the stack that's in in the radio so that's the the main achievement is the uh, loop back is working with the internal prbs so that's a big milestone and congratulations to everybody that's helped uh this will this work will will get built on and and there still is some refinements and some optimizations that could happen and lots of documentation that needs to happen. All right, so the second major uh, point uh, is that there are updates to the, or planned updates to the PRBS module. So this is sort of looking towards the next week or so. Um, and there's there's three sections to this, this point. Okay, so there's three uh, sort of updates planned. We're going to add an, what we call an auto sync function or automatic synchronization function. So what we're going to do is set the upper 16 bits of the PRBS control word, this is a register, uh, to a non-zero value. And this initiates an automatic sync whenever our error count exceeds a particular value. Um, and so this synchronization, you know, we will let our, you know, we have a register that uh, a status register that counts errors. We have a register that counts, you know, how many bits have you attempted to transmit that gives you error rate, right? Okay, so watching error count, whenever it exceeds the value, we're gonna do an auto synchronization. And this lines up like the PRBS generator, it's a linear feedback shift register, and it, it is lined up with what we think that we're sending. Okay, so the second part is to make a generic configurable change. Uh, so this is a language sort of specific thing when we talk about generics in VHDL. Uh, we're kind of talking about um, sort of uh, these are the variables, I guess you might want to look at them that way. Um, so so what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, we have, have these values in mind and we're going to put them in the code. Okay, so make a generic configurable change to the PRBS synchronization function that the count reset and the error insert values such that when they're enabled, those control bits are toggled to initiated that associated sections. So this is sort of a control, a consolidating control over this. When we talk about error insert, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we're running our PRBS, we're running the loop back, we're, we're, we're cooking along. Now we want to control the errors. We want to insert errors because for a loop back just through the logic, you would never really see an error um, as long as the code's working right. So in order to simulate error conditions, to simulate a channel, we have uh, you know, the function of inserting an error. Um, and so now what we're going to do is kind of consolidate that uh, along with the count reset, along with the synchronization to line up everything so that we know where we are. Uh, lining up, Getting all of those three things together, packaged together, is a, a good top level um, step forward. And, and Matthew explains, for example, a zero to one transition will cause a sync and a one to zero transition will cause a sync. An easy way to implement this, in other words, the toggle 
uh, toggling this particular bit, it everything syncs. So you're forcing a synchronization. And he explains an easy way to implement this update is read modify write, where the modify is an XOR for sync. Uh, you're XORing with, with the hex value of eight for a sync. You're XORing with a hex value of four for clearing the counters, and you're XORing with a hex value of two for error insertion. So your bits are moving up and down you know, the register position. Now, all of these updates have been simulated and are working as expected in simulation. And so now we're going to um, let it loose and let people play around with it and, and test it. Uh, so we have a number of different ways that we uh, can test this particular uh, system. And the, the final uh, update for PR, PRBS uh, module updates is that all of these things, you know, modifying the um, the logic itself means that the bit file for the FPGA is updated. Uh, you know, modifying the firmware and the Linux build, there's this whole separate ecosystem. They're all kind of like uh, packaged together in our repository. So when you clone our MSK Pluto FPGA repo for this project and you type make, all of this stuff happens and it gives you uh, in the end, a firmware build that you then update your particular Pluto SDR. Now that's really slick, uh, but that has to be tested. So any of the changes underneath the hood have to be uh, built and tested. And at this point, the new firmware build completed successfully. It worked as expected. So that's the uh, that's a lot of updates and a lot of um, uh, detail stuff about uh, Opulent Voice. Um, moving forward as uh, as quickly and as confidently as we can. If this is something that, that you find interesting and you're like, oh my goodness, you know, a minimum shift king, I've always wanted to learn about that. Uh, we have lots of good resources on this and a very, very good uh, actively developed minimum shift keying VHDL implementation um, that's uh, suitable for, you know, ex immediate experimentation on the amateur bands and can be taken and used as an open source uh, you know, implementation for, for anything that you might, might want to, to implement. Um, so, so we're here to kind of advance the, the state of the art, so to speak, in, uh, in amateur radio, and we're succeeding. So look for more demos coming up. We'll be able to demonstrate this over the air. We anticipate uh, pretty shortly uh, with the loop back working in logic the next Big step is to to show loop back working uh, over the air, which will be on a bench, um, you know, so so transmitted and received a, across a, a bench. Um, but that sort of decoupling, you know, when you don't have a loop back and you're actually transmitting over the air from from one hardware to another, uh, then all of the synchronization functions. And in in this context, it means that you're able to synchronize to your to your signal and all of the demodulating and decoding is working. Uh, that's a big deal. So to have it work over the air, an end-to-end -end over the air test is 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 always like our our top goal. Um, and so that's that's looking uh, closer and closer. So I don't I don't know exactly which week that will will be able to report success there, but it's uh, with with success or with progress like what we've reported today, that is more and more likely. All right, so that I think is a fair assessment of where we are this week. And um, I'm gonna open up the floor to any last comments or questions from anyone. All right, thank you everybody. This is a, a great week and we're uh, looking, looking forward to uh, plenty of progress next week as well. So all of your, your effort and uh, uh, time is, uh, time and talent is deeply appreciated. I couldn't do these ambitious things without you. All right, see you on Slack. Bye-bye.